Her name is Victoria Flores, and <laughs> she's a Georgia Tech tennis player, athlete, student athlete that dealt with something firsthand. So I want to be able to for her to tell her story, have her voice be heard because she feels like it's not being heard. And that's what we're going to do. So Victoria experienced something firsthand that no one should have to experience, which is hate in general. Like, what are we doing? And so, Victoria, I've already told them you're a Georgia Tech tennis player and you've had an experience of your own. And I thought that it would be important if you said it yourself, if people could hear from you yourself. Like, no, seriously. And this is, uh, and Victoria, I want to introduce you to the crew. That's my sister that you see right there waving. There's my snook, which is my mom. That's uh, my VP. That's who you reached out to, Paul Garino. And just wanted you to know you have allies here. And so as soon as I heard it, you know, you just sent the text and you're here right now. But as soon as I heard what happened, I wanted you to be able to have a platform to have a voice. So please just just run down what happened. Um, First of all, I'm sorry it happened, but tell us what happened. Um, yeah, so this flurry happened almost just exactly 24 hours ago. Wow. So I'm still, I'm still processing it. Um, and there's a lot of emotions involved, but I, the irony is I literally walked out of Sweet Hut, which is an Asian bakery in Atlanta in Medtown. And I had Boba in my hand. I was about to cross the street and the walk signal came on. So I looked at the cars and I noticed they weren't moving. So I started walking and I noticed this car was starting to just go when I got to the middle of the street. And obviously there was like no sign of stopping. I literally jumped out of the way. Um, so she wouldn't hit me. And then she was driving by this, um, this lady, the driver said, I don't want to see these words. F, you, F out of here with the virus, you B word. Wow. I should have hit you with my car. And then she just drove off. Um, and obviously, I had no license plate. I did not even think of that. I just started crying in the middle of the street. Um, and it was so interesting because the night before, I stayed up till like 4 a.m. like crying because I was thinking about how my parents are coming in two weeks and they're from we're from a small town in Fort Dodge, Iowa and they have they experience like you know like racial slur and like really horrible comments but obviously nothing like physically that's like close to being assault and I just was so worried you know having that fear of oh my gosh like I don't want them to come here anymore because I don't want something to happen to them and it's so interesting because then the next night like that happened to me. That's that's I'm look I, like I said I'm so sorry that happened to you sorry, just yeah. as you've seen what's going on like so being a part of the black community that's a that's an understood hate that people can understand what's going on but for you I think the people like this I, you see I have it up here because I think this mm -hmm. is a new thing people aren't necessarily used to having to talk about Asian hate can you just talk about that like that's a thing that's already been here right yeah, so um, it's very, I think one reason why it's very hard for me this week and my frustration is that people are kind of just now realizing that this has been going on. And this started before the pandemic really got like hit, hit the US last year. And there's certain statistic that people don't realize, like there's been almost 3,800 hate incidents towards Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders within one year only yeah. since last March um, across the country and big cities, the hate crimes against Asian Americans has gone up 150%. Um, and it's been going on, but a really big part of like Asian culture and like, t you know, stereotypes, especially for women who are 68% of the time targeted in these hate, hate crimes are, you know, we're meant to, we're taught and grew up to be, you know, not confrontational, mm -hmm. um, you know, don't speak up and out about things, you know, just be quiet, mind your own business. And, you know, especially like with immigrants, it's all about coming to a new country, you know, living the American dream and getting a better life, providing for your family. So, you know, <clears> those things, these really, really horrible things are not as important to us in 
for most Asians. And that's why it's been so like shoved under the rug. And I feel like now, because that happened this week, people are finally realizing it. And it's just been sad because I've already known this has gone on for so long. Yeah. No, I understand. And so for me, you know, you talked about having a having your voice be heard. So if you had to have your voice heard, if you wanted people to know something, because it, I just had an interview with Jeremy Lin, the same thing happened, not not the car incident, but he was called coronavirus on the basketball court. Yeah. And he talked about just that experience of, you know, just first of all, I don't even know how to, I can't even put it into words, but he was just saying that, you know, he wanted to use it almost as a learning lesson, like so that people can learn that, yeah, you guys might think this is funny, but it's really not funny. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly why I had, I knew I should text Paul because like Paul is like the coolest manager ever. And he just talks <laughs> yeah, to me, like, let's go, me. <laughs> he he talks to me like a normal dude. And, you know, um, for some reason, I just had this like, kind of like that rage you know that anger that I need to do something because my dad was telling me last night don't be sad don't worry this will be a blessing in disguise because you can use this to like amplify the voices that have been silenced and that's also something that as a fellow minority I understand that our culture especially in his American history has been silenced the same way when we are in school and we learn about history we learn about white history we learn about it from a white person's perspective not a black person's perspective yeah. especially from the south and there are things that I'm learning like I was watching this video of this like congressman talking about how the most decorated like military unit in like history ever was composed of all Asian Americans and that's something I've never even heard of you know so it's like it's just we've been silenced for so long and I'm obviously the opposite of any Asian stereotype like I will never not speak out which I is why it. I I literally said I am the worst and I'm not the Asian to mess around with in Atlanta <laughs> I like that you are not and listen one reason you're not is because you got us you know I talked to your school already and I told you guys when I talk to you, I'm like, yo, if anything's going down, I said, you, were you on the call when I talked to you all? Always. I'm the one okay, that so come on I, the first time. Yeah. So I talked to the school and I told them, yo, if anything's going down, I got y'all. Like, and I'm so glad that you took that serious because I yep. mean that. And so if nothing else, I have this platform that I can use that can be your voice as well. So if there's anything that you want to say, get out there. The floor is yours because I know that my sister, Snook and Paul, we all have things that we want to say to you to show that we're an ally. Like I already told you, like, yeah, they picked the wrong one because like, you're my homie. So like, we don't, we don't play that. So we are going to talk about it because that's how things get like, all I've done is used my platform to talk, but you see yeah. the strides that it's made. And so first of all, I'm like, you're so courageous, so proud of you for even wanting to talk out and do that because that is against the norm for your culture necessarily, mm -hmm. but it needs to be said. And so like this, th like this is, this is, I think this should be the new normal. No one's going to be silent about hate crimes. No one's going to be silent about how it makes us feel. No one's going to make excuses for the actual person that did it. That's we're done with that. There's no excuse for what happened yeah. to you. Cole. Uh, yeah. It, uh, you know, I have a son who's, I have two sons that are in college. Well, actually three, but two sons that are in college that are away at college. I have one that's closer and you talking, <laughs> it terrifies me because it's like, um, you still are some, you're still somebody's child and that these people are just not, somebody is somebody's sister, brother, child. And for <laughs> them to just think of that person as not a person is absolutely disgusting to me. Um, what I've always said that needs to happen in these situations. And a lot of times, like you said, it was, you were just so upset by the situation. You didn't get the information. You know, you were just so happy that you were not hit, not assaulted by this, but we have to, and we don't want to, because like you said, it's that not speak up. It's that keep your head low, keep going, keep moving, move through it. We have to start persecuting these people, or prosecuting these, sorry, persecuting, prosecuting these people. Like these people need to be put in the system. As soon as you put them in a the system and it costs them money and time away from their jobs and fines and stuff, 
they'll stop doing this. But the fact they're cowardly and do this and then run away, we have to start holding these people accountable because if we do it, they're going to hold us accountable very mm-hmm. much. So they're going to make sure it's taken care of. So I am so sorry that happened to you. Um, you are very, uh, very courageous by saying something. And then you're helping someone else who went through it, who said, well, maybe I should have said something. So just continue to be you and it'll always work out in your favor. Thank you. Snooka Booker. Okay. Um, I am just, I just want to apologize. Although, you know, I don't know who did it or, or whatever. I just think that, you know, as a member of this country, you know, you need to have an apology uh, given to you about those those actions and like my daughter as a mother it, it just really really frightens me about how uh, uncaring uh, individuals can be in you know with very you know and one of, one of the things I always think about is these people don't even know you know uh, they're ignorant this I guess is what I want to say yeah. they're ignorant and um, hey in this country, as you said, you know, it, they pick whatever date or whatever group, you know, and that's who they, uh, they target. And like you said, in the history books, we don't get anything about all the other different cultures that have actually made this country great. And I think one of the reasons we've seen so many flare-ups like you talked about is that uh, for the past four or five years, we've had an administration who kind of, um, you know, uh, brought it up a lot in, in not in a good way. And so I was happy to hear today that the president and vice president, you know, our current president and vice president are in Atlanta about that particular situation, because I think, you know, it, it takes changing and it needs to start at the top. And so I'm glad yeah. that they have recognized that it's something that they need to speak out about and let everyone in the country know that this is not who we are. Really. Not at all. Right. And shouts Absolutely. to our, our current president Biden, my <laughs> VP Kamala Harris. What does the coolest manager have to say about this? <laughs> VP, what is what does the coolest manager feel? Yeah, so um well appreciate it that one uh yeah so actually i mean i kind of found out about all this like when ben baller been talking about it on his podcast but i didn't realize like how serious it was until like because it just kept on happening and happening so then i was like what what the heck's going on um and then i think just going back to your point where you're uh i think you said your dad said or you talked to your dad or something and then i mean just ironic because we usually shoot on thursday and just have so happened to be that we shot on friday today so like Yeah. yeah you hitting us up so stuff i guess does happen for a reason it does. so appreciate you coming on no and, and to that point um, VP. one thing also uh what needs to happen is uh you realize the person was trying to hit you with their car and and you know uh saying bow things out the window what we need to do is for people to step up someone else in that line of traffic saw what happened and they should have taken down Absolutely. that that abs uh, that uh uh, license plate number and send it to the police themselves because you know but for grace of god there go them you know in yeah. the same situation the point we're trying to make is you did everything right like yeah. you know you didn't do sometimes the victim becomes like well what could you have done to change the situation you did everything right you know yeah. you made sure you were okay you got out of there the point is that the hate has to stop and whether it's hate against black people, hate against the Asian community. Like, can we just like get past that is the whole point. I know you got a practice to go to. And so we're not going to keep you any longer, but Victoria, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being courageous enough to come tell your story. Because like my sister Cole said, somebody's going to hear your story and probably tell theirs now. And it's, and it's going to be a domino effect. So thank you for coming on here and and talking to us. Thank you and be blessed. Thank you. you. And the funniest thing is that you said that the president and the vice president are coming. I already told Stacey Abrams and Raphael Warnock. So you best believe you the wrong person (laughs) person to come at. Yes. I love that. And that's what you do, though, Victoria. You're doing everything right. Let it be known so that people will feel empowered to let us know and let everyone know what happened to them. And then we can start 
holding people accountable to Snook's mm-hmm. point. So again, you have allies in all of us and and we'll be we'll we got your back. Okay. Just know we got your back. And and not to mention yeah. just one last thing before you go, not to mention it's good that the school knows too, because there's a lot of kids yeah. and they know that these kids are here without parents. A, a lot mm-hmm. of the times in college yeah. campus this so they feel like these people are target because where's your family who's going to be yeah. your back, you know your backbone but you got a backbone here we your you family yeah i'm gonna let back, you know right, right now here. tell so. your parents you got family <laughs> you here you got it's a backbone yeah. here <laughs> and that's sorry just one more point i mean there's obviously a million things i could say right now but i think the most sad thing is that i went on a walk yesterday around my campus and our georgia tech is made up of like half of Asians, like half of our student population are Asians. And every single Asian I walked by, head down, walked as fast as they could, tried to be invisible. And it reminded me of the work that I love to do is social and racial injustice. Like that's obviously that's how we met. And the way that I had felt last year when, you know, I told you that my ex-boyfriend and my coaches and my friends all who are black in my community, my mentors, they were feeling that way. And I didn't understand that kind of pain or hurt before, which that led me to, you know, forming the racism and prejudice awareness group and, you know, being diverse, you know, doing all these different initiatives. Right. And that's like the kind of support that I'm, you know, I wish and I hope that we would get the same way that like, you know, I, un- I know that all minorities feel this way. Like I, yeah. fe- I understand exactly. I've had instances of, you know, prejudice and, you know, like implicit biases and like certain situations where I knew it was because of my race and how I looked. But now that was a point that I literally almost physically got hurt that I understand. I don't, I don't even want to walk out of the, bu- the door sometimes because I'm like, well, they're going to see me. They know I'm Asian. They hate me already. And that's the saddest part. And that's what I want people to understand is we can't change like you and everyone on this call. We can't change how we look if we're dark or we're brown or we're black. And that's the part that people don't understand that I want them to. Yeah, absolutely. Girl, yes. Absolutely. And keep doing what you're doing. Keep those communities going, the groups that you're starting. That's absolutely. how you create change. So yes. keep doing everything you're doing. It's important. Mm-hmm. Good okay. luck in practice, yeah, practice, Victoria. Okay, listen. <laughs> Good luck. I know, I know how that is, and I don't want you late. That's why I'm always like, I don't want you late for practice. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you for hopping on. Honestly, like I, I'm so happy that you reached out to Paul because it needed to be said. Yeah, Amen. thank you. I just, I really want just that anybody who's watching, especially if you're, you know, AAPI, just know that your voices matter and you need to speak up about these things because we have been silenced for too long, and I'm not take anymore that's right drop the mic okay (laughs) drop the mic victoria thank you thank you thank you so much thank you thank you so much for having me no have a good one bye bless